Welcome everyone, Christine here with a discussion about Total War Rome 2 and Total War Attila and why they are two of the worst games in the series produced by Creative Assembly and two very consequential games because if you've played the Total War game that came out since Rome 2 and Attila you have played the game defined by these two particular titles. Why is that? Well, because Attila is really a cheap expansion for Rome 2 that they released as a full title. And then you have Warhammer 1. And what Warhammer 1 is at its core, with all the monsters, the magic, the 64-bit, which increased performance. But really what Warhammer 1 is as a title, it's a reskin of Attila. Many of the same fundamental gameplay mechanics taken from Attila... The framework, if you will, of the game, of the game taken from Attila, which is then taken from Round 2. So that is very important. A lot of the issues, in fact, the vast majority of issues that Total War has to this day is because of decisions that Creative Assembly made in Rome 2 and Attila. So that's one of the reasons I'm making this particular video. To talk about these issues, talk about what Rome 2 and Attila did so very poorly... And just destroyed this myth as well that somehow Rome 2 was fixed or that Attila is a game worth playing. They are not worth playing. They are two games that are utter trash that are not worth your money. And I have spent a good amount of time playing both of them. More so in Rome 2 than Attila, but certainly a decent amount of time in Attila as well. What is my experience with Rome 2 and Attila? Well... This is something I did in Rome 2, those two achievements. That was within three weeks of the game coming out, I had achieved that. So I have played these games. It's always irritating when people say, oh, you should play them more. I play a lot. Like, that's the part of understanding, a be understanding the work of a content creator. I play a significant amount of hours in these titles. I've played the most in Warhammer 3, to be clear, though before that I had played a ridiculous amount in Medieval 2. Hey, I was a big fan of Third Age Total War, what can I say? Despite some of the issues that something like Third Age Total War does have, well, some of the issues of Medieval 2. So I do have experience. Here's some of the issues. One, let's talk about game-specific issues that didn't necessarily carry forward. So both Rome 2 and Attila run fairly poorly. The reason they run fairly poorly, like over here I get, what, 50 FPS? If I deselect my army, maybe more. But the reason these games run so poorly, in particular Attila, because it has more visual effects in some ways than Rome 2, but the reason these games run so poorly in BAL and in terms of the campaign map, like the campaign map of Attila is well known for its really poor performance, but the reason is 32-bit. These were the last two games that Creative Assembly made before the switch to 64-bit. And it is one of the reasons you shouldn't buy these games because the performance is atrocious even on a modern system. Like I can get FPS drops to like 20 or 30, dependent on the battle, dependent on the campaign situation. And 1440p over here in both Rome 2 and Attila. Rome 2 does run somewhat better, but like, in this case, I'm not even maxing it out over here in uh, Attila. Like, I'm going quality as opposed to max quality. There's issues. And then there's no, uh, no way around it. People will always argue that, oh, mods can fix things. Well, mods can fix crap performance. They can, there's some things, some tricks and all that I can help with that. Absolutely. But fundamentally, mods cannot fix bad performance. That is just a fact. That's the first thing. And it applies to both battle and campaign. Second thing, pathfinding is bad, AI is bad, diplomacy is limited. The diplomacy being a limited part is something that would carry over and be a significant issue going forward uh, into uh, going forward into into Warhammer and into other games. It was Free Kingdoms that would end up fixing it. Like. The issue with diplomacy is like you can't region trade, for instance, which is pretty annoying in a game like this. And sure, 
this was part of the legacy of Shogun 2. Because look, Shogun 2 did introduce some of these things. Like, let, let's be clear on this. Shogun 2 is not blameless. Shogun 2 restricted uh, region trading had its own issues with diplomacy, which carried forward. Then you have the problem of blood DLC, day one DLC, that, and legendary difficulty being added. And legendary is not a difficulty that Creative Assembly has ever handled all that well in the series. It's the difficulty I play on because playing on Lord difficulty is not necessarily a great experience if you're a veteran, a veteran player, but Creative Assembly's handling of difficulty is just not that great overall. And this certainly is the case in both Rome 2 and Attila. The battles play badly because they are stupid. Like, people will say, oh, you can, the siege battles of Attila in Rome 2 are good. I'm like, yeah, sure, if we ignore the idiocy of the AI. And to be sure, that has carried forward. But it was such a massive step back from Shogun 2, which again, Shogun 2 has its issues. But how do you go from Shogun 2 to this shit fest that we get in both Rome 2 and Attila? That's something I would like to know. What was Creative Assembly thinking? Because I don't quite understand it. Like, how do you get, go from a game with so, so rich in detail that had so much promise? Like, it's not like Shogun 2 is perfect, it has its issues. But many of those issues, surprisingly, can actually be fixed with mods, minus the diplomacy issues. But, like, yeah, Fall of Samurai, superb game in a lot of ways. Rome 2 and Attila, not so much. It is bizarre to me to think of the idea that, like, oh, the battles in this game are great. It's like, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. They're ba the balance in this game is bad. General sniping is a real thing, and that's a problem. While certainly morale shocks can be rather enjoyable when you're dealing with Attila, un undeniably so. Like, you can win battles in Attila with relatively weak, uh, small casualties. But the problem is, the issue with that is, like, look at this campaign as the Western Roman Empire. The Saxons threw two full stacks against me. The Franks followed that up with two full stacks. I annihilated them. The problem with that is, like, it just kind of feels cheap. And this is a problem with a lot of Total War games, not just the Rome 2 and Attila. And it's actually not the problem with like Warhammer or Free Kingdoms or even Troy. But the issue that you get created is like when general sniping is so powerful and the AI is so ridiculous and the campaign design is pretty poor, like you end up in this kind of situation, in particular in Att Attila here, where general sniping is very much the way to go. So you're abusing AI behavior, you're abusing the vulnerabilities of the AI to knock them out. Now, again, it's a problem that carries forward to some extent in Warhammer, but significantly better because of the Lord uh, mechanics over there as opposed to how things worked in Attila. Hell, even worked in Rome 2, though, to a lesser extent. Okay, so those are specific issues. Poor performance, bad pathfinding, bad AI that do plague both Rome 2 and Attila. And that's nothing, some, those issues, the AI pathfinding performance problems that these games have cannot be fixed by any mod that exists. I don't care how many people want to be fanboys of DEI. DEI does squat in those respects. Like people say, oh, it's a great mod. It's like, okay, for a mod, for what is, sure. For, to pretend that somehow it's magically fixing these kind of issues because these issues exist in both these games, no, it is not the case. But these are specific issues to the games. Also, Attila not having UI scaling, Rome 2 having UI scaling, like Attila is a really terrible game to play in a lot of ways. That That is a problem. But okay, let's talk about specific issues that these games have that would carry forward into the series and bring ruin to the series as a whole. Let's consider difficulty for a second. So in Attila in particular, you have this idea. Difficulty level modifier. And what this does is if you're playing on legendary difficulty, you get slapped with a minus eight difficulty level modifier in terms of public order. You wanna know why in Warhammer 1, 2 and beyond, we get constant rebellions if we play a campaign? It's because Creative Assembly thought that, oh, Legendary is not annoying enough. Let's slap this shit on top of it. Also, 
Attila and Rome too have this idea of squalor that in in Attila in particular we get to we start talking about like the religious details which I feel like while religious aspects and these kind of influence systems had existed before the way they ended up doing it in Attila in particular would serve as the precursor of the corruption system until CA basically decided to do away with it in Warhammer 3. And let me be clear, the corruption system of Warhammer 1 and 2 or the religious system in Attila are not great systems. They're annoying, it's very difficult to change them. Some people are masochists, but like it screws over quite a lot of races. In particular, like Play of Vampire Counts campaign <laughs> ends up being pretty difficult to deal with, especially because when you pair it with the way the AI cheats, because the AI doesn't have to deal with these kind of problems when we're talking about corruptions, the AI is not limited in the same way the players are limited. Creative Assembly's idea of balancing campaign difficulty and Attila in particular was like, let's screw over the player, but the AI doesn't give a shit. So that's fun. Not really. Other things that have carried forward in every game since then to some degree or another. Surplus points. So in Attila, while we don't need a certain level of surplus to be able to get a higher TR man settlement building, we do require surplus points in order to develop certain, uh, certain lands. So for instance, over here, dependent on the number uh, dependent on the territory we're dealing with over here, I can unlock an extra slot in my territory with, uh, so, with one of those surplus points and build whatever I want. This kind of system where you're spending surplus points on a structure rather than just the main structure, that's something that has carried forward to this day. Like the, sur the growth system, the surplus system, something that has been prevalent in Total War since. In particular, if we look at Pharaoh, it's kind of really using a modified system that we see in Attila. You want to know, by the way, how you deal with Attila as the Western Roman Empire? Because it's like this myth, oh, it's one of the hardest campaigns in the history. No, it's not the hardest campaign in Total War history. If you understand that, yeah, you're going to get constant rebellions when you're playing on it, but you can also benefit from these rebellions because they give you experience, they give you money. You will lose army integrity, which is something I'm going to get to in just a second and the legacy of that system. Uh, but you can make a lot of money and experience for that. But what you really want to do is improve your public order, improve sanitation, and maintain control over your territory. Also get food production up to high level, rinse, repeat. And give me 20 turns over here, I'd stabilize the situ some situations. It is pretty unavoidable as the Romans that you will lose territory, but you can control it. Ultimately, the territorial losses like the Western Romans. It's better as the Byzantines. Okay. It is better at, if you're playing as the Byzantines uh, in a campaign. They don't have quite the same annoying factors. Well, they do, but they don't quite get the same uh, level of public order issues. That's the, that's the problem for the Western Romans in a campaign. Another thing to mention, army integrity. Uh, army integrity. This would carry over into the fi fightiness mechanic that would plague the greenskins and the beastmen for a fairly long time, contributing to those races being pretty terrible until Creative Assembly remade both of them in different ways. But army integrity doesn't quite work in the same way but it is at the core of what the fightiness meter would ultimately end up being for both Beastmen and Greenskin in uh, Greenskins and Warhammer. Horde armies. You know how Beastmen, Warriors, Chaos were pretty crap to play. How Nakai is still pretty bad to play in a lot of ways. You get the Horde armies created for Total War Attila. While it was a different system to some extent because you could settle land if you're playing a horde army in Attila. Though there were some exclu- like you could play the Huns as an exclusive horde faction. You ended up with um, 
with a really bad system that would take Creative Assembly quite a long time to more or less eliminate. Th that's the legacy of Rome 2 and Attila, especially on the Warhammer series, but not just Warhammer. You can think of Thrones of Britannia, which really, Thrones of Britannia is the worst World War game in a lot of ways, but Thrones of Britannia just doesn't have the same legacy that these two games have. That's why these games are so important and so terrible, because not only are they bad games, universally considered bad, unless you're talking about people who are fanboys for one reason or another, or, or people who are historical fans and they're pissed off at CA because they haven't released any historical games since then. Yes, Free Kingdoms doesn't count, Troy doesn't count, Pharaoh doesn't count. Thrones could count, but really, a lot of people don't care about that. So I understand that people are pissed, especially those that don't care about playing Warhammer, but the notion that these games in any way, shape, or form are good is just that, a myth. It's a lie. It's a misinformation at its peak. So army integrity into fightiness, the public order modifier, the horde armies, just to name a couple of issues that would carry forward for years and cause issues. One of the biggest changes though, the biggest by far, minor settlements. Oh yes, the same kind of siege campaign dynamic that I've talked about a lot in Warhammer 3, and it's certainly been the case there in other tiles, um, was created for Rome 2, carried forward in Attila, carried forward in basically every game since then. Different system than Shogun 2. I'm not completely opposed to the system, to be clear, though it ends up with ridiculous uh, situations. I certainly don't believe every siege, every siege should be painful. Like, I look at the Medieval Kingdoms mod for Attila, and no, I, I can't stand that. Like, if you're forcing me to play every Solomon Battle being a siege, especially because of the dynamics of a campaign and whole war game <laughs> that is gonna be a pretty awful experience that's where i stand on that but the solution they had to uh the siege dynamic like the, the solution uh, the um, idea that every province could have like one major settlement a couple of minor settlements was not really great necessarily in retrospect i think shogun 2 showed you could handle it better. Spreading settlements around more so you didn't have as many of them to fight, having better siege battles, because the siege battles in Rome 2 and Attila are far worse than the siege battles of Shogun 2. Uh, especially Fall of the Samurai, but Shogun 2 in general. Like, just making making the system and then making the siege battles as they are. Horrible pathfinding, horrible sink kills, horrible melee combat. It, create, it creates a lot of issues that persist to this day. Minus the melee combat because Warhammer 1 moved past the synced kill system, abandoned it, moved on to something different there. Maybe not necessarily the most visually impressive, but damn. Like, yeah, I will take the melee combat of Warhammer 1 and 2 any day over the melee combat of Rome 2 and, and Attila. So fi some things were fixed relatively quickly after this. But other issue, like the dynamic of sieges, having to fight a lot of them, having settlements very close to one another, the minor settlement battles that we do have in Warhammer 3, until CA removed them from Mortal Empires, all of that is from Rome to or Attila and or Attila. Most of the issues that we see in the games since then come from Rome 2. Certain specific issues like the Horde armies are from Attila. And that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg, really. Also, Rome 2 and Attila solidified scummy DLC practices, because while Shogun 2 created the Blood Pack DLC, that's when they did that, the pre-order DLC. It was really with Rome 2 and Attila, in particular Rome 2. Like, Rome 2 is like one of the most awful games in terms of DLC practices for a creative assembly. The scumminess of the DLC practices of Rome 2 are unparalleled. But why did CA do it? Because they knew they had sold a large number of copies, because Rome 2, a lot of people expected it to be a great game, given the reputation of Rome 1. People were misled, to say the least. But they still had a significant number of people that had bought, um, bought the game. So that's why they released a lot of DLC for Rome 2. And showcased to Creative Assembly that they could do that. They could make a game and nickel and dime their consumer base 
for DLC. Now, I'm fine with the idea of DLC, but it depends on what kind of DLC, to be specific. Like, if it's something like Twisted and Twilight in Warhammer 2, sure, amazing. Top-tier quality DLC, Silence and the Fury. Again, amazing. If it's a unit pack that's adding overpowered units, no. If it's Day 1 DLC, no. If it's Blood Pack, absolutely fucking not. Rome 2 and Attila, it's, in particular Rome 2, had some of the worst DLC practices by far in the entire series of games. So you add it all up, you, you add it all up with the legacy of Rome 2 and Attila, I do stand on my perspective that these are two of the most terrible games that CA and uh, CA have released in the uh, Total War series. Not objectively the worst, in the sense that, oh, there are worse games. Pharaoh is worse to play, Troy has its problems, for instance. Though I think I would give more credit to Troy than people, other people would. But Pharaoh certainly has its issues, Friends of Britannia has its issues. I would not really play Shogun 1 or Medieval 1, for instance. Or not touch those games at all. So all those games, and Empire, yeah, Empire is a piece of crap as well. Make no mistake on that. The, the difference is with Empire and Rum 2 and Attila. It's like, by the time of Shogun to follow the Samurai, they had moved past a lot of the problems created by Empire originally. Whereas, we've never really moved past the issues originally created by Rome 2 and Attila. Well over a decade since Rome 2 came out, we're still in, in this universe with all war, where the core gameplay or the, core, uh, or the framework of these games is based on two really crappy games. That's where I stand. Quistine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.